One of the main topics at Sea Airspace 2018 is also the FFGX Future Frigate Program of the US Navy following a down select of five shipyards in February this year. In this video, we are discussing the program with some of the shipyards involved, as well as some of the potential equipment suppliers for the future frigates. Well, we're very grateful and we're extremely excited for this opportunity. Uh, the Navy down selected our frame design as one of the five that have to develop a conceptual design for FFGX. We think our design meets already in the parent vessel all the requirements that the Navy has set up in terms of capabilities and is a well-proven design. We already have six of the ships in service for the Italian Navy and there is a seventh one which has been launched. This design also has proven to be flexible enough to adapt itself to you know, a French variant, an Italian variant, an Australian variant, and we also had in the past an Egypt variant. So it's a very flexible design, well proven and affordable. In the US we've invested a lot of money in developing our shipyards in Wisconsin. So Marinette Marine is in serial production for LCS and it's ready to build this ship with very minor investments. FREM is the Italian FREM in this uh, ASW version, the anti-submarine, which is the one that is closest mm -hmm. to the requirements of the US Navy, will be coming here. The Alpino will be in Norfolk, in Baltimore, in New York and in Boston starting from mid-May. So we look forward to meet all the viewers on board the ship, the FREM Alpino, to talk about FFGX and the opportunity that has been granted to us by the US Navy. All right, Tim, uh, what's your feeling following the down select in uh, February? Yeah, so we're thrilled to be part of the uh, competition uh, for the frigate, future frigate. Obviously, we are going to use an aluminum trimaran variant uh, to go forward. Uh, we're currently working with PMS 515, the frigate program office, to come through um, the priorities and then try to match up our C-frame to what the Navy really wants in their frigate requirements. We have shown brochures before. This is the first time we've really had a model that shows the configuration that we're thinking about. You know, probably the biggest changes um, to the LCS are the, the flight deck. We notch the flight deck and create a fantail aft that allows you to arrange weapons. So back aft, we do have uh, the OTH weapons. Right now, we have harpoons arranged. We understand there's a down select coming on what is the OTH weapon. We're able to do whichever ones are in the competition. Um, we also have a, a VDS, Vero de Sonar, arranged on the fantail. Uh, and then there'll be a lightweight tow as well over on the, the starboard side. Um, moving a little farther forward, uh, you see up on the 05 level, we have a uh, NULCA, which is uh, a decoy system that uh, the frigate uh, requirement has. Um, moving a little f further forward, you see we have VLS arranged on the bow. Um, some of the other changes you may be able to see uh, is the radar. There is a EASR radar, phase array radar on this ship. Uh, again, it's uh, something that the Navy wanted. It, it does take up an awful lot of margin, so it's high and it's heavy, uh, but that's what the Navy wanted. It's a very capable radar, will fit with uh, the VLS launchers. All right, and finally, what's next for Austal? Um, so, uh, Frigate is next. Um, we are also working uh, heavily on uh, other missions for the EPF, the former joint high-speed vessel. The Navy has shown an interest in using that ship to do some of the missions that the LCS has done in the past, handling drones, handling off-haul sensors. Um, so they're talking about maybe putting a crane uh, that can operate with an 11-meter rib on the EPF. Uh, but again, we, we are, we'll stick with our core of uh, high-speed aluminum ships until th there is no market for that. And then obviously we look to, to another market. Uh, oil and gas, uh, we have looked at commercial, but right now we're you know, pretty much hitting our stride on aluminum ships. In this event, uh, our main uh, target was to make the uh, USA defense community aware that Navantia is opening an office here in the USA. 
because we have historically very strong links with, uh, uh, with defense uh, companies in, in the U.S., like Lockheed Martin for eight years, Bath Ironworks for more than 40 years already. Uh, General Dynamics is also an electric boat. Uh, we are cooperating with us in the submarine program, Raytheon in Australia with AWD. So we uh, decided to open an office here to strengthen all that relationships. Uh, and that's really the main focus which we wanted to put forward that message. And among that, maybe the, of course, the future uh, FFGX program that is just being in the, in the initial phases of the process. Uh, we have a partnership with Bath Iron Works where we are together going to work in that uh, project based on the F-100 design in the Hobart, which you can see there the model. The Hobart is the most uh, modern brother of the family of the F-100, which is the Australian ship. Two other designs down selected by the US Navy back in February are the Lockheed Martin's Freedom Frigates, and a proposal by Huntington Ingalls Industries. Unfortunately, no one would talk to us during Sea Airspace 2018. The Freedom Frigate is based on Lockheed Martin's Freedom Class LCS. We covered the design extensively during Surface Navy Association in January. Make sure you check out our coverage on YouTube. One piece of information we learned, however, is that the large arrays fitted on top of the Slick 42 antennas are representative of active offensive jammers. There is pretty much no information whatsoever regarding Ingalls' proposals for FFGX. However, it is highly speculated that their design proposal is based on the national security color. The Mark 110 is an amazing system. We did analysis back many years ago as to what the intermediate caliber gun of the future is for the U.S. Naval Forces, and study after study showed that the Mark 110 is the right weapon system. It's on both LCSs, as you know, it's on the National Security Cutter for the Coast Guard, and it's also been selected for the OPC for the Coast Guard. 25 more ships are going to have the Mark 110. It's also specified in the FFGX, as you requested, uh, program of record. I just actually had a conversation with the program manager and that was confirmed. So very, very pleased about that. We're going to have a one common intermediate caliber gun weapon system throughout the entire U.S. Naval Fleet. The selection by the, the government, both the Coast Guard and the Navy, was that the Mark 110 was the most reliable, most dependable, and most lethal of the weapons and fit the platforms best of any other selection. It fires at 220 rounds a minute, okay, all the way from a single shot up to full auto. Okay. Um, there, right now, there are two munitions that go into the Mark 110. There's the practice round and the war shot. Makes it very simple. You can select one or the other out of carousels. So the CO or the gunner's mate can choose which round he's going to fire. So the practice round simply exercises the rounds or can provide a warning shot if needed. The war shot, also called 3P, has six modes of operation. It has a proximity fuse in it, it has a time fuse in it. You can gate it, which means you can make sure that when it's going other over friendly forces, it cannot explode. And then when it's in the area of, of engagement, it now is active. And it's, if it sees a, either a pulse back from its uh, RF sensor or time goes off, it will explode and destroy the target. This is our Alamo uh, projectile. Uh, the official name is called the Mark 332 Mod Zero a High Explosive 4G uh, Guided Bullet. But both those platforms have specified the Mark 110 gun as their gun of preference, and uh, the Alamo is the projectile they plan on using. And what makes it unique is it is a guided projectile. It'll be the first one fielded in the inventory. We've come up with a few novel concepts that uh, are unique to our round in terms of using our uh, seeker to detect uh, where the target is. Uh, the gun has a residual amount of error that's associated with it, and we take out that error. And we've come up with some very cost-affordable uh, solutions to be able to achieve the guidance. So the key thing is that it allows you to start uh, processing targets at much longer ranges. 
when you're interdicting a swarm, that becomes a very critical capability to reach out and uh, solve that problem at range before they get danger close. The Alamo round was selected as the round that will be used on the new fast frigate as well as on the littoral combat ship, uh, specifically to, uh, for its capabilities that involves counterdicting small boats and slow moving UAVs. This is a decoy launcher we have designed uh, to replace existing uh, fixed shaft launchers. At the beginning of the 2000s, the French Navy identified that the uh, um, shaft was not effective anymore. And that's why we uh, designed with them a new solution that is based on corner reflectors. Uh, this launcher is already in service and qualified in, uh, in the Egyptian Navy. But uh, uh, we have also some uh, contract in the Middle East and in Asia. So that uh, means that uh, today we have 30 systems to deliver in the coming years. We think this is a very good solution um, to integrate on, on uh, the FFGX. Why? Because it's um, a passive decoy solution. So it could be a, a good uh, addition to the existing Nulka. Uh, but it's much more affordable than, than the Nulka itself. And it provides um, corner reflector, so that means a solution to lure a radar guide uh, missile. We also integrate uh, infrared decoy, and we have also, also anti-torpedo decoy. So we have a full solution in the same launcher, and we can integrate between two to eight launcher on a, on a ship to uh, provide a, a good coverage. We think that uh, this system is really uh, a nice solution for the LCS class uh, frigates. Uh, it's simple to install, very small uh, footprint, only uh, 400 kilo uh, fully load, and uh, the installation is really simple. You just have to bolt it and you have four cables to uh, uh, install. The reload, it's a matter of minutes for two people. You can reload two launcher in 10 minutes. Uh, rounds are about seven kilos, so really easy to manipulate.